Hello dear students, I welcome you all to this one shot series. The idea of this series is to complete the whole chapter within 60 minutes. So, sirf 60 minutes mein pura chapter hum logo ko revise karna hai, thik hai? Uh, theoretical portion to hai, concepts to hai, we will also pick up a few numericals, thik hai? Toh ab dekho, solutions kaafi bada chapter hai and we have only 60 minutes, so time is running out, let's be quick and start. So, what are we going to study? We are going to talk about solutions and concentration terms, solubility in Henry's law, vapor pressure in Rolle's law, ideal and non-ideal solutions, azeotropic mixture and colligative properties followed by Wenthoff's factor. Almost sab kuch humne isme include kar liya hai. Fine, pyare bachcho, to ye hamara channel hai, Akash Baiju's J. You would like, subscribe, share and comment on uh, YouTube, thik hai? And also we are having this, uh, you know, telegram, if you can just, you know, scan this, you will be getting the telegram link as well, just may aapko notifications mil jayenge about our upcoming classes, okay. SK Sachin Kumar says, abki J. mein achcha college bhi apne naam karunga, wah. Very good. Siddhesh says, hello, David Lang says, sir, please try to start with the basic. But in one hour, I can only touch all those points because it is a revision series, okay? Fine. Let's go ahead. Now, we will be talking about the Akash Baiju's app. It is a very nice app and I personally believe that all of the students should subscribe to this app because you have got everything that you want. A personalized app which tracks your journey, which analyzes your performance, identifies your strength and works on your weakness. Okay, animated videos, hai, daily quizzes, hai, concept ko simplify karke aapko bataya jata hai. Hai. So, there are lot many features of this. Chale. Now, let us come to a topic because as I said, samay kam hai, time is less. So, I am going to start. Okay. So, solution. Okay, pehle kuch theoretical point fada fada se discuss kar lete hai. Kya hota hai solution? So, it is a homogeneous mixture. Homogeneous ka matlab kya hota hai? That the concentration is same in each part of the solution. Thik hai? Concentration is same. So, now the question arises ki bhai, concentration wo kis terms mein measure karte hai? In what terms do we <coughs> measure concentration? So, for that, we, <coughs> we need to talk about the two components. One is solvent, the other is solute. The basic definition is solvent is one which is present in a larger quantity, solute is one which is present in a relatively small quantity. Hai? But I would like to give one point in addition over here. Dekho. If suppose I am having NaCl solid plus H2O liquid giving an NaCl liquid solution, just may ye ionize ho jayega. So, there is nothing like NaCl liquids, it will be ions, Na plus ions and Cl minus ions. But over here, if they ask you which one is the solute and which one is the solvent, I mean, no quantities are given over here. So, how will you tell? So, the answer is very simple. You see, the component which has the same physical state as that of the solution, Dekho, this is liquid, this is also liquid. So, irrespective of the quantity, quantity ka koi baat nahi karenge hum log, this is solvent. So, beta, solvent will never change its physical state. It is the solute whose physical state changes. But suppose physical state is not changing, say for example, we are having ethanol, which is a liquid and you mix it to water. You are getting an alcoholic solution, which is also liquid. So, in such a case, we have to define by this that larger amount solvent, lesser amount solute. Okay. Vicky is asking, sir, J means or boards ka slavers same hai is sal to hai agle sal nahi. Aane wale sal mein boards ka slavers kam ho gaya hai. Abhi to jo bhi boards ka apka to hoi gaya na, I think the boards are already going on na, beta. So, change hai wo agle saal ke liye. Now, 
सो नाउ वी नो वट इज अ सॉल्यूट वट इज अ सॉल्यूट वी हैव टू टॉक अबाउट द कॉन्सेंट्रेशन टर्म्स ठीक है तो कौन कौन सी कॉन्सेंट्रेशन टर्म्स हैं परसेंटेज इन परसेंटेज कॉन्सेंट्रेशन टर्म्स आर वेट बाय वेट वेट बाय वॉल्यूम वॉल्यूम बाय वॉल्यूम आई विल क्विकली गो थ्रू ऑल दीज सो वट इज वेट बाय वेट वेट ऑफ सॉल्यूट अपॉन वेट ऑफ सोल्यूशन इन ग्राम्स मल्टीप्लाइड बाय हंड्रेड नेक्स्ट इज वेट बाय वॉल्यूम वेट ऑफ द सोल्यूट इन ग्राम्स अपॉन वॉल्यूम ऑफ सोल्यूशन मिली लीटर प्लीज चेक दिस पॉइंट इट इज इन मिली लीटर अच्छा ये भी ध्यान रखिएगा बेटा मिली हमेशा स्मॉल एम में लिखा जाता है और लीटर हमेशा कैपिटल में लिखा जाता है कई बच्चे ऐसे लिख देते हैं एम एल दिस इज स्मॉल एल इसको कैपिटल एल में लिखना चाहिए बिकॉज लीटर इज ऑलवेज वॉल्यूम में जो लीटर है दैट इज एक्सप्रेस बाय कैपिटल एल ठीक है नेक्स्ट इज वॉल्यूम परसेंट विच इज वॉल्यूम बाय वॉल्यूम सो वॉल्यूम ऑफ सोल्यूट इन मिली लीटर बाय वॉल्यूम ऑफ सोल्यूशन इन मिली लीटर मल्टीप्लाइड बाय हंड्रेड ठीक है वेट बाय वेट आप बॉर्मिटा देखिएगा जरा बॉर्मिटा का जो पैक है उसके ऊपर यू कैन सी इट्स रिटर्न वेट बाय वेट वेट बाय वॉल्यूम रू अफजा है आप देखेंगे उसके अंदर जो भी सॉलिड्स ऐड किए गए हैं वो वेट बाय वॉल्यूम आपको शो किया जाता है वॉल्यूम बाय वॉल्यूम आई ड्रॉप्स आप देखेंगे उसमें ऑल द कंपोनेंट्स आर शोन इन टर्म्स ऑफ वॉल्यूम बाय वॉल्यूम परसेंट ठीक है फाइन चलिए अदर कंसेंट्रेशन टर्म्स स्ट्रेंथ मोलारिटी मोलालिटी नॉर्मैलिटी पी पी एम एंड मोल फ्रैक्शन इनके ऊपर क्वेश्चन आप लोगों से पूछे जाते हैं फर्स्ट इज स्ट्रेंथ ऑफ सोल्यूशन वेट ऑफ सोल्यूशन पर लीटर ऑफ सोल्यूशन ध्यान रखिएगा वेट ऑफ सोल्यूशन पर वेट ऑफ सोल्यूट पर लीटर सॉरी मोलारिटी इज नंबर ऑफ मोल्स ऑफ सोल्यूट बाई वॉल्यूम ऑफ सोल्यूशन इन लीटर्स मोलालिटी इज नंबर ऑफ मोल्स ऑफ सोल्यूट बाय मास ऑफ सॉल्वेंट इन के जीज When we talk about normality, we have to talk about number of gram equivalents. ठीक है Number of gram equivalents क्या होते हैं बेटा Number of gram equivalent is mass upon equivalent mass. Equivalent mass क्या होता है Equivalent mass is molar mass upon n factor. n factor ये क्या होता है सर देखिए बेटा n factor is defined separately for oxidizing and reducing agent, acids and bases and for salt. ठीक है तो एक एक देख लेते हैं फॉर ऑक्सीडाइजिंग एंड रिड्यूसिंग एजेंट एन फैक्टर क्या है नंबर ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन्स इन्वॉल्व जैसे इस इक्वेशन के अंदर देखिए कितने इलेक्ट्रॉन्स इन्वॉल्व हैं पांच तो एम एन ओ फोर माइनस आइन का एन फैक्टर कितना हो जाएगा पांच ओके क्लियर है यहां तक समझ में आया ओके आगे चले चले नेक्स्ट इज फॉर एसिड्स एंड बेस एसिड्स के लिए बेसिसिटी बेसिस के लिए एसिडिटी नंबर ऑफ एच प्लस आइंस बेसिसिटी ओ एच माइनस आइन एसिडिटी ओके फाइन फॉर एग्जांपल एच टू एस ओ फोर का बेसिसिटी टू है एन फैक्टर टू हो गया एन एच का जो एसिडिटी है दैट इज वन बिकॉज वन ओ एच माइनस आइन रिलीज करता है सॉल्ट की बात करेंगे तो द सम ऑफ टोटल कैटैनिक और टोटल एनानिक चार्ज फॉर एग्जांपल ए एल टू एस ओ फोर होल्थ राइस को देखिए इट विल ब्रेक अप टू गिव यू टू ए एल थ्री प्लस प्लस थ्री एस ओ फोर टू माइनस राइट तो टू इन टू थ्री सिक्स देखिए ये सिक्स हो गया आपका चार्ज बताइए इसमें कोई डाउट है किसी बच्चे को तो Yes, any doubts to anyone? चलिए आगे चलते हैं नेक्स्ट इज पार्ट पर मिलियन इंपॉर्टेंट है इसमें बच्चे बहुत गलती करते हैं इट्स द नंबर ऑफ पार्ट ऑफ सोल्यूट प्रेजेंट इन वन मिलियन पार्ट ऑफ सोल्यूशन इसका मैं क्वेश्चन भी करवाऊंगा फाइन कई बार फॉर्मूला पुट करते वक्त गलती हो जाती है इसलिए वो फॉर्मूला कैसे बना दैट विल दैट ऑल्सो आई विल टेल यू गाइज ओके नेक्स्ट इज मोल फ्रैक्शन यू नो मोल ऑफ इट्स द रेशो ऑफ नंबर ऑफ मोल्स ऑफ पर्टिकुलर कॉम्पोनेंट अपॉन टोटल नंबर ऑफ मोल्स so moles of solute uh, mole fraction of solute is mole of solute upon total moles in solution mole fraction of solvent is moles of solvent upon total moles in solution and please remember that the sum of mole fraction is always equal to 1 yes all volume dependent concentration terms are dependent on temperature because jaise normality hai molarity hai there we are having volume and denominator तो क्या होगा बेटा वेन यू चेंज द टेम्परेचर वॉल्यूम विल चेंज 
as a result the concentration term will change. So, molality is independent of temperature, yaad rakhiye ga. Molality ho gaya, mole fraction ho gaya. अच्छा एक क्वेश्चन ना आपको बुक्स में देखने को मिल जाएगा विच ऑफ द टू इज मोर कॉन्सेंट्रेटेड सो प्लीज रिमेम्बर वन मोलर इज ऑलवेज मोर कॉन्सेंट्रेटेड देन वन मोलर ठीक है वन मोलर इज मोर कॉन्सेंट्रेटेड देन वन मोलर चलिए क्वेश्चन कर लेते हैं एन एक्वे सोल्यूशन ऑफ ग्लूकोज इज लेबल्ड एस टेन परसेंट वेट बाई वॉल्यूम कैलकुलेट द वॉल्यूम इन विच वन ग्राम मोल वन ग्राम मोल मतलब वन मोल इन ग्राम्स तो देखिए टेन इज वेट बाय वॉल्यूम वेट इज वन ग्राम मोल दैट इज वन एटी ग्राम पर मोल है वॉल्यूम वी हैव टू फाइंड आउट इन मिलीलीटर मल्टीप्लाइड बाय हंड्रेड राइट सो दिस टेन गोज बाय दिस टेन तो ये कितना आ जाएगा वन एट जीरो जीरो एम एल और वन पॉइंट एट लीटर so the answer is C. Check karo beta. Is me koi doubt hai? Check it and let me know. Is there any doubt in this one? Jaldi batao. No doubt sir. Very good. Fantastic. Next question, 31.5 gram of HNO3 is added to 500 ml of water, choose the correct option. Okay, so strength or molarity we have to get out of here, so calculate it, what will happen with strength? 31.5 mass in grams upon volume in liter, this is 0.5 liter, this becomes 63 gram per liter. Molarity what is it? 31.5 is the mass. Given 63 is the molar mass upon 0.5 liter. So, what will happen? 1 by 2 into 0.5 which is equal to 1. So, molarity is 1 molar, strength is 63 gram per liter. Clear? Okay. B as well as D. Ritesh Bansal, B as well as D. Both the answer is. जल्दबाजी में अगर एक मार्क किया तो मार्क्स कट जाते हैं ओके श्री निधि सेट बी एंड डी सो पॉइंट जीरो फोर जीरो जीरो फोर ग्राम एन एच डिजोल्ड इन टू फिफ्टी एम एल ऑफ सोल्यूशन चूज द करेक्ट ऑप्शन ठीक है देखो मोलैरिटी क्या हो जाएगा पॉइंट जीरो जीरो फोर ग्राम था सो दिस इज फोर इंटू टेन रेस टू पार माइनस थ्री ग्राम नंबर ऑफ मोल्स कैसे निकालेंगे डिवाइड बाई फोर्टी so this is number of moles multiplied by 1000 divided by 250 clear okay now see 1020 cancels out okay so 4 into 25 is 100 so this is 4 into 10 raised to power minus 3 into 10 divided by 100 so this comes out to be 4 into 10 raised to power minus 4 molar ये तो मोलारिटी आ गई अब पार्ट्स पर मिलियन देखो फॉर्मूला बाद में आएगा देखो वी आर सेइंग दैट 250 मिलीलीटर ऑफ द सॉल्यूशन इज हैविंग 4 इनटू 10 रेस टू पार माइनस 3 ग्राम सो 1 एमएल विल हैव दिस मच सो 10 रेस टू पार 6 एमएल बिकॉज़ मिलियन में फाइंड आउट करना ठीक है नाउ टेन रेस्ट टू पार सिक्स कैन बी रिटर्न एस टेन रेस्ट टू पार थ्री इनटू टेन रेस्ट टू पार थ्री कैंसेल्स एंड टू फिफ्टी इनटू टेन रेस्ट टू पार थ्री इज नथिंग बट फोर आंसर क्या आ गया सिक्सटीन पीपीएम फॉर्मूला फॉर पीपीएम अगर फॉर्मूले से सॉल्व करना है 
mass of solute volume of solution तो देखो वही हो गया चेक करिए और बताइए बेटा चेक चेक इट एंड लेट मी नो इज इट फाइन श्रीनिधि इज आस्किंग सर व्हाट इज द वेटेज ऑफ सॉल्यूशन चैप्टर इन जेई मेंस बेटा एक क्वेश्चन तो पक्का आएगा ही आएगा ठीक है चले आगे नो लेट्स टॉक अबाउट सॉलिबिलिटी द बेसिक थियोरी ऑफ सॉलिबिलिटी व्हाट इज सॉलिबिलिटी इट्स द मैक्सिमम अमाउंट दैट कैन बी डिजॉल्व इन 100 ग्राम ऑफ अ सॉल्यूशन सो दैट द सॉल्यूशन बिकम्स सैचुरेटेड मींस द मैक्सिमम पॉसिबल अमाउंट ऑफ सॉल्यूट इन अ गिवन क्वांटिटी ऑफ सॉल्वेंट लीड्स टू अ सैचुरेटेड सॉल्यूशन so the concentration of the saturated solution is solubility so solubility is the concentration of saturated clear beta okay chalo now we'll be talking about solubility the dependence it depends upon nature of the solute and solvent temperature pressure let's discuss this part in detail nature of so, of the solvent and and the gas because right now we are talking about the solubility of gases and liquids so nature of solvent and gas so we are saying like dissolves like so polar gases will dissolve in polar solvent okay and non polar gases will dissolve in non polar solvent so for example uh, iodine if you treat uh, uh, take it as a gaseous one so iodine gas will be dissolving more in ccl4 ammonia yeah hcl gas can dissolve in water because hcl is having some dipole moment h2 is having a dipole moment so polarity hai so hcl will be more soluble in h2o rather than ccl4 okay Now, when a gas undergoes ionization and solvent, it is highly soluble. For example, as I, as I just said, HCl is highly soluble in water. Next is temperature. Please remember, as you increase the temperature, the solubility will decrease, because solubility is an exothermic process. So, if you increase the temperature, solubility decreases. For this, I have got a small video also. Just look at it with attention. Have a look at this video. राइट right, बेटा सेम वीडियो आपने क्या देखा सेम टेस्ट ट्यूब है इफ यू आर कीपिंग टेकिंग कोल्ड वाटर व्हिच इज हैविंग आइस सो द सॉल्युबिलिटी इज मोर बट इफ यू पुट इट इन हॉट बॉइलिंग वाटर द गैसेस ट्राई टू एस्केप आउट सॉल्युबिलिटी इज लेस इनफैक्ट दिस इज द रीजन व्हाई जो एक्वेटिक स्पीशीज होते हैं ना बेटा दे आर मोर कंफर्टेबल इन कोल्ड सिचुएशन अगर जो आर्कटिक लेवल्स पर आइस है इफ दैट मेल्ट्स डाउन तो क्या होगा The aquatic species will die because the uh, dissolved air will escape out. Oxygen, nitrogen escape out. कर जाएगा. Yes, this is useful for NEET as well, बेटा. This is useful for NEET as well. Pressure. So for pressure, when we talk about the solubility of gases in liquids, we use Henry's law. Okay. Now what does it says? It says that the solubility of a gas in a liquid at a given temperature is directly proportional to its partial pressure so you see the small fraction is directly proportional to partial pressure or p is equal to kh into chi where kh is nothing but the henry's law constant p is the partial pressure chi is the mole fraction you are aware of this particular formula now let's talk about kh that is the henry's constant now what we are saying is 
we are saying if you increase the pressure the solubility is increasing if you decrease the pressure the solubility decreases so if you want the gases to dissolve in the liquid you need to apply higher pressure on the gases so that they get dissolved that is why you would have seen whenever you are opening up a cold drink bottle the gases escape why because in inside the bottle the pressure is high okay Now, characteristics of Henry's law. See, Henry's law constant K H ki baat ho rahi hai. It is having the same uh, unit as that of pressure. Different gases have got different K H for the same solvent. Like for water, uh, oxygen will have a different K H. Nitrogen will have a different K H. K H value of a gas is different in different solvents. So, for benzene, oxygen will have a different K H. C C L four oxygen will have a different K H. Alcohol, ethanol, the oxygen will have a different K H. Now this is important part. Yaad rakhega is cheese ko. And the K H value will increase with temperature. Ab dhyan se dekho. Agar K H bada jayega, to mole fraction kam ho jayega. If the K H increases, the mole fraction decreases. So higher the value of K H, lower will be the solubility. Higher the value of K H, lower will be the solubility. Please note this point. But if there is no PDF of this particular session, you have to make notes. Or you can take screenshots if you wish. Okay. Now, which of the following is true regarding Henry's law? Constant for different aqueous solution of carbon dioxide and oxygen at a given temperature. When you assume that the both have the same partial pressure, when you assume that both have the same partial pressure, so what does this mean? When they are having the same partial pressure, means P is same. Now P is equal to K H into chi. Now P is constant. So if K H is higher, chi is lesser. Or vice versa, you can say if the chi is less, K H is higher. If the value of chi is less, K H is higher. So, beta, मुझे बताइए aquatic species live longer because the water has more carbon dioxide or more oxygen. बताओ. क्या था ना मछली जल की रानी जीवन उसका पानी है तो ये जो मछली रानी है ये पानी में जिंदा रहती है बिकॉज ऑफ ऑक्सीजन और बिकॉज ऑफ कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड बोलो आप कहेंगे सर बिकॉज ऑफ ऑक्सीजन सो द सोलिबिलिटी इज कंसिडर टू बी मोर सो द सोलिबिलिटी ऑफ ऑक्सीजन इज मोर सो द मोल फ्रैक्शन ऑफ ऑक्सीजन इज सॉरी सोलिबिलिटी ऑफ ऑक्सीजन इज मोर सो काय इज मोर सो के एच इज लेस so A is the right answer. Aragya, you got it? Aastha Gulati beta sun mein aaya aapko. Okay? Chali. Now, next question. Oh, sorry, next point that is vapor pressure. What is vapor pressure? We say vapor pressure is the pressure exerted by the vapors of the liquid on the surface of the liquid at equilibrium. Equilibrium matlab, we are saying that a liquid is in equilibrium with its vapor. तो आप बोलेंगे वो तो ठीक है लेकिन इक्विलिब्रियम वर्ड यूज क्यों कर रहे हो बिकॉज एट इक्विलिब्रियम द क्वांटिटी सपोज दिस इज एक्स दिस इज वाई दिस वाई इज कांस्टेंट एट एट इक्विलिब्रियम बेटा जब ये कांस्टेंट होगा देन ओनली द अमाउंट ऑफ द गैस और द मोल्स ऑफ द गैस विल बिकम कॉन्स्टेंट वेन द मोल्स आर कॉन्स्टेंट देन ओनली यू कैन यूज पी वी इज इक्वल टू एन आरटी इज एंड and then only you can calculate the value of P. If the value of N is varying, ये अगर change होता जा रहा है, तो pressure fix कैसे होगा? How will you come out with the pressure? To have a fixed value of pressure, because volume is constant, N has to be constant, T has to be constant, and N becomes constant only at equilibrium. This is the significance of the word equilibrium. Clear है बेटा? Okay? Now let's going ahead. Now this is a very very important point. Please have a look at it and ask me a question if you want. इस point को बड़े ध्यान से देखिए और मुझे बताइए कि क्या आपको कोई doubt है इसके अंदर? यहाँ पर ध्यान से देखिए बेटा. It is written does not depend. It is not saying it depends, it is saying it does not depend. Please have a look at it carefully. It 
इट से डज नॉट डिपेंड काफी बच्चे डज नॉट को पढ़ते नहीं है इट डज नॉट डिपेंड अपॉन द अमाउंट ऑफ लिक्विड टेकन ठीक है ये तो समझ में आता है इट डज नॉट डिपेंड अपॉन द सर्फेस एरिया ऑफ द लिक्विड नहीं नहीं सर यहाँ तो कुछ गड़बड़ है इवेपोरेशन इज अर्फेस फिनोमिना बेटा इवेपोरेशन इज अर्फेस फिनोमिना यहाँ वेपर प्रेशर की बात हो रही है तो आप अगर सर्फेस एरिया की बात करें तो आप ये कहना चाहते हैं कि इस कंटेनर में और इस कंटेनर में इफ आई कीप वाटर एट ट्वेंटी फाइव डिग्री सेल्सियस यहाँ पर वेपर प्रेशर कुछ और होगा यहाँ पर कुछ और होगा नहीं ना इसी बात को समझाने के लिए हम लोग रिलेटिव ह्यूमिडिटी की बात करते हैं कि रिलेटिव ह्यूमिडिटी एक पॉइंट पर एक ही वैल्यू होता है ऐसा नहीं होता कि चेंज हो रही है कि मेरे पास तो एक ग्लास है तो मेरे यहाँ पर रिलेटिव रिलेटिव ह्यूमिडिटी अलग है तुम्हारे पास तो एक स्विमिंग पूल है तो रिलेटिव ह्यूमिडिटी अलग ऐसे नहीं होता बेटा एट अ गिवन टेम्परेचर इन अ गिवन एनवायरमेंट वी आर हैविंग वन वैल्यू ऑफ द रिलेटिव ह्यूमिडिटी बिकॉज दिस वेपर प्रेशर इज नॉट डिपेंडिंग अपॉन द सर्फेस एरिया ऑफ द लिक्विड इट इज नॉट डिपेंडिंग अपॉन द वॉल्यूम और शेप ऑफ द कंटेनर इट इज डिपेंडेंट अपॉन टेम्परेचर ओके so now nature of liquid if the intermolecular forces of attractions are less vapor pressure is more because if the attraction is less more particles will go to the vapor phase and will exert more vapor pressure theek hai beta okay dark gamer says sir i have a doubt please ask so loosely held molecules escape more easily into the vapor phase seedhi si baat hai okay उमेश सतपति सेठ सर ऑल थ्री आर टू या इफ द स्टेटमेंट वॉज सेइंग डज नॉट ये इसकी बात कर रहे हैं कि ये डज नॉट है इसलिए तीनों ही सही हैं चलिए नॉट यू नो दैट वेपर प्रेशर इंक्रीजेस द बॉलिंग पॉइंट डिक्रीजेस व्हाई हु विल टेल मी व्हाई हु विल टेल मी व्हाई डार्क गेमर दिस इज नॉट द राइट पॉइंट टू आस्क अबाउट ऑल दिस ओके यू कैन गो टू द वेबसाइट एंड चेक इट आउट फॉर योर चलिए इसका आंसर दीजिए मुझे श्रीनिधि ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड व्हेन यू आर टॉकिंग अबाउट वेपर प्रेशर से दीज आर द टू कंटेनर्स हेयर यू आर हैविंग पार्टिकल्स है हैविंग द सेम इंटरमोलिकुलर फोर्स ऑफ अट्रैक्शन right here also you are having particle having the same intermolecular force of attraction so if this particle has to go to the vapor phase it has to break the bond with this this and at the bottom same way if this has to go to the vapor phase this this and this because here the surface area is more more vapors will go that is fine here less vapors will go so evaporation is more over here but at the same time condensation is also more bhai if the evaporation is more condensation is also more na why are you thinking if more vapors will go there will be more vapor pressure vapor pressure is at equilibrium now is it clear got it great chale now so why is it so that when you increase the vapor pressure the boiling point decreases because the temperature what is the boiling point the temperature at which the vapor pressure is equal to the external pressure it is termed as boiling point so if the external pressure is one atmosphere the boiling point is termed as normal boiling point okay now relative humidity as i said we will talk about this so it is the partial pressure of h2 vapor at a given temperature upon vapor pressure of h2 means the pure this vapor pressure of h2o is when you are taking pure water when i say partial means you are not taking pure there are other liquids also other gases also so pressure exerted by the vapor of water in a mixture divided by pressure exerted by pure vapors of water theek okay? hai that is what will give you the relative humidity okay now saturation we say a gas or gases mixture is said to be saturated with the vapors of a liquid if the partial pressure of the liquid vapors is equal to the saturated vapor pressure so if the uh, partial pressure of water is equal to the value of rh 
or relative humidity, we will say that the, this particular uh, solution is saturated with water vapors. Okay, fine. Temperature, if you increase the temperature, vapor pressure increases because the particles gain kinetic energy and thus more particles will go to the vapor phase. Or in terms of uh, uh, Lee-Shetler principle also you can say that when you increase the temperature, more liquid will convert into the gaseous phase. Now, this temperature dependency is given by clausius clapeyron equation. Now, this is clausius clapeyron equation. Please note it down. Isko note kar lije beta. There are chances ki ye equation theoretically hi push liya jaya without any numerical. Yes, Umesh Satpati, your answer is also right. Archana Yadav beta, aap pooch sakte hai aapko jo problem hai. ठीक है इसको नोट कर लिया आप लोगों ने वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एल एन ऑफ पी टू बाई पी वन प्लीज रिमेम्बर दिस इज नेचुरल लॉग लॉक टू द बेस ई होता है ये पी टू बाई पी वन पी टू इज द प्रेशर एट टी टू पी वन इज द प्रेशर एट टी वन डेल्टा एच बी इज द मोलर एंथेल्पी ऑफ वेपराइजेशन ऑफ द लिक्विड ठीक है ओके चलिए वेपर प्रेशर ऑफ लिक्विड इन लिक्विड सोल्यूशन लिक्विड इन लिक्विड सोल्यूशन सो हेयर वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट द रॉल्स लॉ we are saying that the vapor uh, the partial vapor pressure of a liquid is directly proportional to its mole fraction in the total solution so suppose there are two components a and b the partial pressure of a is given by pa and it is proportional to the mole fraction of a into the solution so pa is the partial vapor pressure chi is the mole fraction of a in the liquid state and P naught A is the pressure of A in the pure state or the saturated vapor pressure. Pressure in the pure state or saturated vapor pressure or equilibrium pressure of vapor pressure of A at equilibrium. All three you can uh, use. Okay. Chale. Now next. Now for binary solutions means there are two solutions. As, as I just told you, P is the partial pressure of A, P B is the partial pressure of B, chi is the mole fraction of A, P naught is the partial is the uh, pressure of A in the pure state, chi B is the mole fraction of B, and P naught B is the pressure of B in the pure state. So total pressure will be a summation of the two. So P T can also be written as instead of P A you can write chi A P A, instead of P B you can write chi B P B. I am giving you one more equation which you can use P T is equal to P naught A minus P naught B chi A plus P naught B. Okay. Now this is also the formula of total pressure. Okay. Now this is the graphical representation. Now see chi A is equal to 0 means chi B is equal to 1 and chi A is equal to means chi B is equal to 0. Chi B is equal to 1 means this, this point shows pure B, this point shows pure A. Okay, this is pure B and pure A. Okay. Now, this is the pressure of B in the pure state, pressure of A in the pure state. As you are decreasing the mole fraction of B, the partial pressure is decreasing. As you are now in this direction, as you are decreasing the <coughs> mole fraction of A, the partial pressure of A will decrease. So this is PA, that is partial pressure of A. At any given point of concentration, suppose you are talking about this concentration. So uh, at this point, this is PB, and this is PA. So you are going to add this plus this to get the P total because P total ka formula kya hai beta? P A plus P B. Now the inference that you can draw from this particular graph is that P T is always lying between P naught A and P naught B. Provided P naught A is greater than P naught B. If the P naught B is greater, the sign ulta ho jayega but P T will always be in between the two. 
PT will always be in between the two. Any doubts in this particular graph and formula, please ask. It is one of the very basic and very important thing. Clear? Chali, aage padhte hain hum Question, the vapor pressure of two liquids P and Q are 80 and 60 torr. The total vapor pressure of solution obtained by mixing three moles of P with two moles of Q would be. Chali ji solve karte hain isko. <coughs> See, number of moles of P is number of moles of Q is 2. So, mole fraction of P will be 3 upon 3 plus 2 which is 3 by 5. Mole fraction of Q will be 2 upon 3 plus 2, 2 by 5. ठीक है? PT का formula क्या बता रहा है? P naught A minus P naught B chi A plus P naught B. So, this is 80 minus 60 into 3 by 5 plus 60. So, the answer will come out to be 72. Correct answer is Arina Khatun gave the right answer, Shrindi also gave the right answer. Beta, I am going to tell you about this formula. You are saying that. I have said P naught A is greater than P T is greater than P naught B. Now, let's take a look at it. Look, son, P naught B is what is it? How much is the value of this question? 60. P naught A is the value of this question? 80. So, P T is lying in between the two, the value is 72. Is it clear? Teja ji, did you understand? No, you are wrong. Teja, you are not getting it right. I have not written P T lying between P and P B. P T is lying between P naught A and P naught B. Please look at the screen carefully. The total pressure is lying between P naught A and P naught B. देखो मैंने ये लिखा हुआ है भाई. That is a total pressure भाई. But I am not giving any condition of P and P B बेटा. I am giving the condition. This is the condition. Then this is the condition. You are getting confused between P A and P naught A. Is it clear now? Tell me. Tell me, beta. Is it clear? See. Let me clear the confusion. Okay, you made a mistake. Okay, now it's clear to Teja. See, let me just clear this up. See, my dear students, now this is very basic, but let me just help you out. Look at the graph. The PT is lying on this line, starting from here, goes up to this point. So, if P naught A is 80, P naught B is 60, P T is lying between 60 to 80. You are getting confused with this P A and P B. I am not giving any condition for small P A, I mean this P A and P B. I am giving the condition for P naught A and P naught B. Considering this graph, I can say that P naught A will always be greater than P total, which will always be greater than P naught B. Now is it clear? Srinidhi, now is it clear? Got it? Chali. Now let's talk about ideal and non-ideal solution. So what are ideal solutions? Which obey Raoult's law, which means that the forces of attraction of solvent-solvent, solute-solute is similar to solute-solvent interaction. Okay, fine. I am giving you that part beta. Now this is the graph for the Raoult's law. Please check it out. 
देखो इस ग्राफ को पहले देखो ये तो समझ में आ रहा है आ रहा है ना समझ में बेटा आप लोगों को ओके फाइन नाउ ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ दिस वी कैन आल्सो से दैट एंथैल्पी चेंज ऑफ मिक्सचर इज जीरो फॉर आइडियल सॉल्यूशन एंड देयर इज नो चेंज इन वॉल्यूम because why enthalpy change is zero because what we are saying over here is that the uh, forces of attraction are same when the forces of attraction are same no energy is given no energy is released when the solution is formed when the forces of attraction are same no change in the volume it takes place please also write over here the delta s mixture will be greater than 0 and delta g mixture will be less than 0 now this is ऑलवेज ट्रू फॉर आइडियल सोल्यूशन इसको लिख लीजिए बेटा ध्यान से कोई दिक्कत है तो बताइए क्लियर है चलिए नॉल इट्स गो अहेड these are the examples of ideal solution please note them down mixture of two alkanes is ideal like anexin and heptane ethyl bromide ethyl iodide benzene and toluene chlorobenzene bromobenzene all are considered as ideal solution please note kar lo inko yaad kar lo inko it is a possibility that a direct question can be asked on this okay what are non ideal solutions which do not obey raoult's law okay why because the solute solute constant uh, force of attraction solute solvent force of attraction is different from the solute solvent force of attraction now raoult's law is not obeyed delta is mixture is not equal to 0 delta v mix is not equal to 0 but please remember delta s mixture will always be greater than 0 delta g mix will always be less than 0 this is true for ideal non ideal solutions okay acha example wali slide wapas dekhni hai acha dekh lo ek baar iska screenshot le lo umesh umesh satpati take a screenshot of this fatafat jaldi se there was a request ki sir is slide dobara dikha do it's all from ncert beta Uh, John Joseph is asking, sir, why are you saying delta S is greater than zero? Beta, whenever you are mixing two liquids, the change in entropy is always positive, irrespective of ideal and non-ideal. Entropy change is always greater than zero, and because the mixing is spontaneous, so delta G is always lesser than zero. Okay. Let's go ahead. Now, non-ideal solution: positive deviation, negative deviation. Okay. Now, uh, for this positive deviation, let me just tell you a small part. In case of positive deviation, the AB force of attraction will be weaker as compared to AA or BB. For negative deviation, the AB force of attraction is greater than AA or BB. Beta, in ke jo examples in CRT me given hai, please mug up those. Here, in this case, the delta H mix greater than zero. is less than 0 isko yaad rakhna beta theek hai okay now colligative properties are the properties which are dependent only on the total number of solute particles and are not dependent upon their nature their shape size etc they are not dependent upon that acha before i go ahead i just want to know from you guys uh is this the definition of colligative property yes or no you just have to give me the answer in yes or no kya ye definition of colligative property hai ya nahi hai batao
Yes, beta, this is not the definition of colligative properties. Colligative properties are defined as the properties in which there is a change in the magnitude on addition of a non-volatile solute to a volatile solvent. The properties in which there is a change in the magnitude due to the addition of a non-volatile solute in a volatile solvent. Okay. This is kind of a property of colligative property that the colligative properties are independent of the nature, they just depend upon their total number. So, there are four colligative properties relative lowering of vapor pressure, elevation in boiling point, depression in freezing point and osmotic pressure. Now, relative lowering of vapor pressure when you are adding a non-volatile solute, what will happen? The surface area will now have the non-volatile solute particles also. So, they will not go into the vapor phase. So, the vapor pressure will decrease. Okay. Hey na? Some of the solute particles will occupy surface area of the solution and they will not go into the vapor phase. So, the vapor pressure will decrease. Look, a diagram se bata deta hun, simple tarika. Suppose A is volatile. Right now, how many A's are there? 5. So, P naught A will be 5. Suppose, when you make a solution, one particle is B, which is non-volatile. Now, how many particles of A are there? 4. So, pressure of solution will be 4. Now, this is the lowering of vapor pressure. So, vapor pressure gets lowered because the non-volatile particles occupy the surface of the liquid. Volatile matlab beta, the one which can go into the vapor phase. Non-volatile means which do not go into the vapor phase. Say for example, NaCl means salt, uh, say urea, say glucose, sucrose, they are non-volatile, they will not go into the vapor phase. Hey na? Fine. Sun mein aage bata? So, this is the lowering of vapor pressure which is delta P, relative lowering of vapor pressure is the lowering of vapor pressure upon the pressure of the solvent in pure state, delta P by P naught and this is equal to the mole fraction of solute. Okay, so, this is P naught minus P s by P naught is equal to chi of solute. Okay, beta? Fine. So, this is written like this. This could be the answer. The pressure of sol, uh, I mean, this. Teja, I have derived it. Check karo, beta. I have derived it for you. Mr. Porwal, boiling point is the temperature at which the vapor pressure of the liquid is equal to the external pressure. Clear hai, Mr. Teja? Shall we go ahead? Chale. So, small is the n is the number of moles of solute, capital N is the number of moles of solvent. Okay. Elevation in boiling point is the next. So, when we add a non-volatile solute to the volatile liquid, the vapor pressure will decrease as I just told you and if the vapor pressure is decreasing, the boiling point will decrease. So, we have to heat it to a higher temperature so that the boiling point can be achieved. So, that is how the boiling point gets elevated. By say for example, I wanted 760 mm of Hg as the external pressure. Theke? Now, there is a liquid which was having a pressure of 700, but when you added the non-volatile solute, this pressure decreased to 650. So, now you have to heat this liquid more, so that this 650 becomes 760. Tabhi to boiling point elevate ho gaya, right? So, this elevation is, now see this is the pure solvent. Here atmospheric pressure is acting, now the pure solvent will try to escape from here. But if you are adding the solute, you see the solute particles are occupying some surface area. So, number of particles going into the vapor phase is now less. So, the vapor pressure is less. So, you need to heat more and that is why the boiling point is increasing and that increase is referred as the elevation of boiling point. So, this elevation of boiling point is found to be 
dependent upon the molality of the solute and that is how you get this particular relation the delta T B is equal to K B into M where K B is the molal boiling point elev uh, elevation constant or ebullioscopic constant. Uh, Mr. Teja, which point you are not able to understand by? Okay. Now, ebullioscopic constant Kb is equal to the elevation and boiling point of one molal solution. Dekho beta, delta Tb is equal to Kb into M. So, suppose if the boiling point elevation is of 1 degree, molality of the solution is 1 degree. So, in such a case, we will say that whatever or rather I should say if you take a one molal solution, suppose if you take a one molal solution, for one molal solution whatever is the elevation in boiling point that will be the ebullioscopic constant. Okay, got it? The unit of this ebullioscopic constant is Kelvin per molality, degree Celsius per molality or Kelvin kg per mole. There is a formula for it as well which is R T B square m into 1000 by 1000 into delta H vaporization but R is universal gas constant. T naught B is the boiling point of the pure solvent, M is the molar mass of the solvent, delta H vaporization is the molar enthalpy of vaporization of the solvent. Please note down this formula. When I was giving my JE exam, that time they used to ask what is the KB of water. <laughs> now they will not ask that part, now they will ask questions based on this formula. So please note this formula. Okay. Okay. But I have done the derivation kar diya na, teja, bache, I have already derived that particular part. See, it is very, very simple. When you add solute, achha, you are talking about this particular formula. See, there is a derivation, but you do not need it. There is no need for a deriving this particular formula, though no formula can be written just like that. They all are derived, but you do not need to derive all this formula. Okay? You do not need to derive this one. Kb is the property of the solvent, the value will be given to us. Fine. So, please remember elevation in the boiling point is directly proportional to the lowering of vapor pressure. So, if the lowering of vapor pressure is more, the elevation in the boiling point will also be more. Please note this relation because they can ask you a conceptual question based on this statement. Okay? A conceptual question based on this statement. Now, let us talk about depression and freezing point. So, when you add a non-volatile solute to the solvent, the vapor pressure will decrease that we have already told you. When the vapor pressure decreases, the freezing point of the solution will be lesser than the freezing point of the solvent and that is why we call it as a depression in freezing point. So, delta T f is the difference between freezing point of a pure solvent and freezing point of its solution. So, this is also directly proportional to molality. When you remove the proportionality sign, you get Kf into M, where Kf is the molal freezing point depression constant or cryoscopic constant. Similar to the value of Kb, this is Kf is equal to R T square molar mass by 1000 into delta H F. Enthalpy of fusion Please remember this T is the freezing point of solvent. Okay. Last colligative property is osmotic pressure. So, when we say uh, what is osmotic pressure, uh, this is a theoretical statement which is given the spontaneous flow of solvent particles from solvent side to solution side or from solution of low concentration side to a solution of high concentration side through a semi permeable membrane is called as osmosis and uh, what is semi permeable membrane is a membrane that allows only solvent particles to move across it. So, what exactly is osmotic pressure? We say 
that the external pressure that must be applied on the solution side to just stop the process of osmosis. This is a simple karke bata deta. Now look at this. Now see. Dekho beta. What is the point? I say that this process is not necessary to study all the process. It is a very simple thing. This is the semi-permeable membrane. Now over here you are having the solvent. Over here also you are having the solvent. But on one side, you are having the big solute particles, okay, which means that this is the solution side and this is the solvent side, right. Now see what will happen, the solvent will try to move in this direction. But these solute particles will block the path, they will block the path. So now the pressure exerted by these solute particles is what I refer as the osmotic pressure, okay. The pressure exerted by these solute particles is what I refer as the osmotic pressure. So, ab isko kisi bhi tarikhe se definition le lije that when the solvent is moving towards the solution side it is osmosis. So, when you apply the pressure that pressure to stop the solvent is osmotic pressure, but in terms of colligative properties sabse simple definition aapko bata raha hon beta from the solution side the solute particles are exerting the pressure on the semi permeable membrane. So, the pressure which is exerted by the solute particles on semi permeable membrane is called as the osmotic pressure and that is why we say pi is equal to CRT where C is the concentration of the solution that is the number of moles of solute upon volume of solution. So, take this particular definition, you can remember it for long and it will be easy for you to solve questions if you use this particular definition that I have given you, okay. But please remember one point over here that the process of osmosis is reversible means solvent will move from left to right as well as right to left, dona taraf jayega. But the movement from the solvent side to the solution side is more, from the solution side to the solute side is less, okay, fine. Chale. So, osmotic pressure is given as CRT, C is the concentration in molarity, R is universal gas constant, T is temperature. Now, next is abnormal colligative properties. Now, why abnormal colligative properties? Because solute tends to get dissociated or associated. So, number of particles will change. भाई आपने डाला NaCl and this NaCl one particle you added but in the solution it forms two or say for example आपने डाला two moles of CH3COH in benzene but it gets associated to form this ये dimerize कर गया so in such a case the number of particles will change so the colligative property will change okay fine now, how do we calculate for the dissociation and association? Dekho, I have told you now. NaCl wala case. So, this abnormality is calculated by using the Venta factor. A Venta factor I kya hota hai? Venta factor I is observed colligative property by calculated one. Calculated matlab, calculated means, uh, say I am taking one mole of NaCl is the calculated value. But it forms two ions, one Na plus one Cl minus n. Ye to observed hai na beta. So that is why it will be termed as observed. Colligative property is always inversely proportional to molar mass of solute. Yad rakho is baat ko. So that is why the I is equal to the reverse. 
तो कैलकुलेटेड मोलर मास अपॉन एक्सपेरिमेंटल मोलर मास ध्यान रखना इस बात को बट हाउ डू कैलकुलेट आई आई का कैलकुलेशन कैसे होगा बेटा इट इज द मोल्स ऑफ सोल्यूट पार्टिकल्स इन सोल्यूशन आफ्टर डिसोसिएशन और एसोसिएशन अपॉन बिफोर एसोसिएशन और डिसोसिएशन नो फॉर एसोसिएशन If n particles of A are associating, I is equal to one minus alpha plus alpha by n. Alpha is the degree of association. For dissociation, A is forming n molecules of it, so I becomes one minus alpha plus n alpha. Just remember these two. Okay, fine. So for dissociation, the value of I is greater than one. No dissociation, it is equal to one. For association, it is always less than one. चलिए. Now Hg2Cl2 is 80 percent ionized. देखो, Hg2Cl2 will form Hg2 two plus plus two Cl minus. So there are in total three ions. So I will be one minus alpha plus three alpha because the value of N is three. This is one plus two alpha. Alpha is given to be how much? Eighty percent. So one plus two into point eight. Solve करो. One point six आया. One sorry two point six आया. Answer is B. Check करके बताइए क्वेश्चन क्लियर हुआ क्या नहीं हुआ? बोलो बेटा क्लियर है लेट्स गो अहेड नाउ नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन विश्व ऑफ द फॉलोइंग इलेक्ट्रोलाइट हैज द सेम वैल्यू ऑफ इंटर फैक्टर आई एज दैट ऑफ के फोर एफ ई सिक्स के फोर एफ ई राइट आंसर ओके डिराइव इंट ऑफ फैक्टर फॉर CST COH with 50% association. देखो बेटा, I told you I is equal to one minus alpha plus alpha by n. Alpha is one, alpha is 0.5. So 0.5 by because the acidic acid on association forms a dimer. So that is why I am taking n is equal to two. So 0.5 plus 0.25 कितना हुआ प्यारे बच्चों? 0.75. D is the right answer. Okay, fine. Next question, when 3 gram of urea is added to 45 gram of water, the RLVP is. Look, RLVP is equal to the mole fraction of urea. So, this is 3 gram urea by 60 gram number of moles. And how will the moles come from water? 45 by 80. This is 0.05, 0.05 plus 2 by 0. प्लस टू पॉइंट फाइव आंसर आएगा पॉइंट जीरो टू डी इज द करेक्ट आंसर सिंपल क्वेश्चन हैं देखो ओके दीज कैन बी आस्ट इन योर एग्जाम्स वेरी वेरी सिंपल स्टेट क्वेश्चन दे कैन बी आस्ट बोथ इन योर जेई एज वेल एज नीट सो दो दिस सेशन इज स्पेसिफिकली फॉर जेई बट बिलीव यू मी दो आर वॉचिंग दिस सेशन फॉर नीट दे विल ऑल्सो गेट बेनिफिटेड फाइंड द ऑस्मेटिक प्रेशर ऑफ दिस एट दिस मॉलिकुलर फॉर्मूला of urea is this. Anyways, molecular molar mass of urea is 60. We don't even need this. Pi is equal to C is 0 0.05. R is 0 0.0821. Temperature is 300. Okay. Now we have to solve it out. And on solving, we will be getting, as far as I remember, I think the value was coming out to be around 1.2 atmos. एक बार आप कैलकुलेट भी कर लेना वैसे 300 इनटू 0.5 इस कमिंग आउट तू बी 15 15 इनटू 0.08 15 इट इस 120 पॉइंट जा 1.2 इस द राइट आंसर बी इस द राइट आंसर फॉर दिस पर्टिकुलर क्वेश्चन सिंपल कैलकुलेशंस ठीक है बेटा सो वेरी सिंपल क्वेश्चंस आप बिंग आस्ट ओके सो नाउ दिस इस ऑल फ्रॉम Thanks for attending this session. I hope I have covered everything in one hour. No, I have taken six minutes more. <laughs> Chalo, koi baat nahi. So, 
I hope this quick revision has helped you, you know, visit all the important points of the chapter solution. I will see you in the next class. Till then, keep studying. God bless all of you. Bye-bye.